Hi there. Welcome to the Wurdenberg Family Farm with Dawn, Brenda, and Alex. Hi, guys. Alex is our son and the designer of the Solar Pavilion. So I know a lot of you have been waiting for this video. So come and join us and hear about solar power on the farm. We're standing in front of the finished solar pavilion and fortunately it's a bright sunny day and we're making a lot of electricity. Yeah we are. Now as I take friends around and show them the pavilion I've heard the same questions over and over so today we're going to answer some of these questions that probably you have as well. The first one we hear a lot is do we have batteries and what do we do at nighttime? Alex? Uh, most solar installations do not use batteries. They connect directly to the grid, uh, just like a stove or a water heater would. The only difference is instead of consuming electricity, they produce electricity. So we are, we're kind of using the grid as our battery then, right? Right, yeah. Okay. That works. Yeah, absolutely. Now the next question we get a lot is, if there's a power outage, do you have power? For the safety of those working on the utility lines, uh, the solar panel systems are required to shut off so you don't electrocute those people. Uh, but these inverters do come with what's called a secure power supply. These outlets coming directly from the inverters will remain active even in a power outage. So Alex, inverters, they convert the direct current from the pavilion to alternating current for the house, right? Correct. The wires running out to the pavilion are direct current. The wires coming, uh, running to your utility meter are the alternating current directly connected to your breaker box. So these are both 2,000 watt secure energy, right? Yes. Okay. The inverters themselves can handle up to 6,000 watts of alternating current, but the secure power supply is good for 2,000 watts, which is what uh, a, pa a typical outlet could provide in a home. Pretty cool. Next question. The next one is, what happens if we produce more electricity than we use? That would be great, wouldn't it? That's gonna happen. Yeah, most days you'll be producing more electricity than you consume. And what happens is your electricity meter, it keeps track of all the energy coming into your house and it also keeps track of all the electricity leaving your house from your solar panels. And then your utility company will look at those two values and they will just charge you the difference, the net difference. And in months where you produce more electricity than you consume, your utility company will give you a credit. And that credit will roll over month to month. And if at the end of a year, every April, if there's still a credit left, they'll pay you for the extra electricity. How about that? Getting paid by the electric company instead of paying a bill. Pretty cool. I love coming out here and looking at the meter spinning the way that we're selling power to the energy company. That's a thrill to me. He comes out a lot and looks at it. <laughs> Now, one of the biggest questions we get asked is, what's the expected payback on this project? It'll be about five years, and you'll have made as much um, money as you put into building this system. So we're fortunate that Alex designed the system so we didn't have to pay for the engineering services. And then Alex was our chief project engineer. And our son and son-in-law worked with me and Alex to build the building. So we saved a lot of money in that, but all in all, we have about $20,000 in the cost of the pavilion. So five years recovery? Yeah, for a typical system, it'll be five years to recover all the costs of the materials and five years to recover the cost of labor. Since your labor was free, you don't have to worry about that. Because if we had to pay labor, how much would this have cost? It would have cost twice as much. Yeah. Isn't that nice he did it for free? So it's still worth it though, even if you have to pay for the labor. What do you think, Alex, is the life of this uh, installation here? How long will it produce electricity? The solar panels have a production warranty of 30 years, but I wouldn't be surprised if they lasted 50 years or more. It's just glass and slices of rock. Great. So what if, I'm going to throw one other question in here. What if somebody says, hey, the panels keep getting cheaper every year, so I'm just going to wait another year and another year. When should people jump in and 
put the solar in. Yeah, so the incentives are declining uh, pretty much as fast as costs are falling. So uh, as, now is as good a time as any. Because part of the reason it, the payback will be so what fast is because we got a tax credit on it. Absolutely, and that's one of the reasons we had to rush, if you see our other video, why we had to rush and get this thing finished before the end of the tax year. And they did. <laughs>So folks have asked me, what does it look like from under the solar pavilion? So come on in here and take a look. This building's built a little differently than many. You can see it has typical trusses up top, but when you look underneath, there is no actual roof, is there, Alex? No, we used a method called building integrated photovoltaics, where the, the solar panels make up part of your building materials. In this situation, it's the roof. And when you look up on the underside of the panel, well, first they look like they're partly glass, but then you also see the squares and the lines. What are they? Yeah, so there's a couple of things unique about these solar panels. Uh, most solar panels have a, a plastic back sheet, but these have a glass back sheet. And that's because these are bifacial solar panels. Any light that hits the back of the, the solar panel will also produce electricity. And so what you're able to do is you're able to see each individual solar cell from below as well. Uh, there are 72, 72 cells in each solar panel and those all are, are arranged in series in parallel and then the panels are combined in series and sent over to the inverter that we saw uh, earlier in the video. Okay, so it gets solar energy coming from the top through, which is what you'd expect, but you're saying it also gets reflected light from below coming up through. How would you proportion that? How much actual benefit is there light bouncing back up? Well, it's a tough number to nail down because bifacial solar panels are still pretty new in the industry, but I think we could get about a 5% boost in our energy production. Plus, it looks really cool, doesn't it? Yes, the aesthetics are the main reason. Now, if you look at the end of the building, you can see that we have clear gable ends. We did that to allow the light to come in and get reflected light back up into the pavilion. Right, and one of the reasons we're able to use a pavilion shape is because we have an east-facing roof and a west-facing roof, and then the pavilion is directed perfectly north and south. So the reason we have the clear uh, end cap on this truss is so that all the light coming in from the south-facing sun uh, will be able to bounce off the ground and, and, and illuminate the backs of the panels. So in addition to producing uh, electricity here, we have this great building that we can store. Right now it's a trailer stored here. But we're also going to experiment with something that Alex sent me, agrivoltaics, where we grow vegetables underneath the shade. It's partial shade. We'll pl put plants on the edge so they get direct sunlight in the morning, but then they have shaded or mottled light during the day. That should help with vegetables that bolt when it gets very hot in the summer. In fact, the USDA was here just last week to take a look at what we're doing. So they're anxious to hear how our experiments come out. Well, thanks for joining us for the video of our solar pavilion. The good news is that the solar pavilion is up and it's working well and it stood the test of winter storms and some severe gusts. Yeah, pretty doozy winds and it held up fine. Of course, the engineer that designed it made sure of that. Yeah, I tried to design it to withstand hurricane force winds, so that, that's to be determined. And I think we've only had 40 mile an hour winds, so. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all right. We have summer thunderstorms coming yet. So thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next time on the Wardenburg Family Farm. And if you were interested in this and really liked what you see, make sure you click like and then subscribe to our channel because there's lots more exciting stuff coming. And if you have questions, just note them below. Thank you. And Alex will be the one to answer him probably. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. <laughs>